Final Fantasy VII Remake welcomed fans back to Midgar with a familiar premise only to leave them scratching their heads as the credits rolled. Now, four years later, we're back to pick up the pieces of what happened with Cloud and his party, Sephiroth, and the mysterious Whispers of Fate. The story of Rebirth picks up on Cloud, Tifa, Barret, Aerith, and Red Thirteen in Calm. Cloud shares what he knows of Sephiroth to the group, including the events that took place in Nibelheim five years ago. The party is left in a position where they know that they need to stop Sephiroth, but they don't know where he could be, so they decide to follow the cloaked figures. This adventure takes the party across the entire world. Starting in the luscious grasslands, it's not long before you're taking in the seaside cliffs of Junon, dense jungles of Gungaga, or the expansive desert of the Cosmo Canyon. Just like in Remake, the majority of these story beats will be familiar to players, but many are fleshed out in ways unimaginable in the original. An early example of the kind of depth added to Final Fantasy VII through Rebirth is how you obtain a chocobo. In the original game, it's a simple matter of purchasing the chocobo lure materia from the chocobo farm, and then catching one in battle. By comparison, Rebirth introduces you to Chocobo Billy, his family, and their tragic backstory, you also get to learn of his ambitions to raise Chocobo and get revenge for his parents' deaths. You'll learn about the farm, go out and catch a wayward Chocobo in a stealth minigame, learn to ride them in a racing minigame, and only then can you make your way through the swamp. What was inconsequential dialogue with a forgettable character in the original instead sets up arcs for characters like Billy to return throughout the whole 80-hour adventure. While each side character gets their moment to shine, it's the immediate party that gets the most development. Getting to see Tifa's reactions to Cloud's retelling of the Nibelheim incident, Barrett's scornful return to North Corel, and most powerfully Red Thirteen's homecoming added a new level of depth to the characters that just isn't present in the originals. Praise absolutely needs to be given to Max Middleman for his outstanding work playing Red Thirteen. Whether putting on a gruff exterior or when Red Thirteen's able to let his guard down, this performance really shows off Red Thirteen's range. Cloud also has a number of additional scenes showing how frequently he's being slowly influenced or infected by Sephiroth. This is just one of the concepts about the greater Final Fantasy VII narrative that has been introduced or fleshed out in other movies that now find their home in Final Fantasy VII Rebirth. While the majority of Rebirth takes everything fans of the 1997 classic know and love and expands upon it, there are of course also some interesting changes that take place. The Gungaga Reactor is one of the first places that the story really begins to deviate from the original narrative. Even if you know the story front to back, you're going to encounter moments that will throw you off guard and they are all so much fun to experience. From as early as the Nibelheim flashback all the way through my 80 hours playing Final Fantasy VII Rebirth, I had a blast with this story, whether that was following the main plot of Cloud hunting for Sephiroth, or meeting the different denizens of the world and hearing their stories. One aspect of Final Fantasy VII Rebirth's story that I did find issues with was the pacing of the final act. At the time I was most wanting to push through the story to reach the conclusion, a new mechanic was introduced that served little purpose other than slowing down the players they explored. What I felt could have been a really strong crescendo of emotions and spectacle kind of spent some time tripping over itself. Combat in Final Fantasy VII Rebirth is a continuation of the hybrid real-time ATB combat from Remake, complete with a returning stagger gauge where you can capitalize on an enemy's weakness. At its basics, the combat isn't too dissimilar from Final Fantasy VII Remake, where players will alternate between basic attacks while the ATB gauge charges before setting off a variety of spells or abilities. Each character has their own unique fighting style, returning as Barrett and his long-range machine gun, or Tifa and her quick physical attacks. This time around, the party is also fully joined by Yuffie and her ninja shuriken combos, as well as a fully playable Red Thirteen and Kate Sith. My favorite character to play as other than Cloud was Aerith. While her basic attacks aren't too much to swing a staff at, it's in her magical award abilities that she truly shines. She can create a field that will stop enemies in their tracks, assist in charging the ATB gauge of other characters, and even a ward that will allow you to cast magic twice in a row while within it. Needless to say, for some of the late game bosses with elemental weaknesses, the ability to deliver a 2 for 1 Faraga special 
helped immensely. While you can do a lot to upgrade your characters outside of battle, the synergy attack mechanic will allow you to be boosting your party's abilities in the middle of combat. If a character has an unlocked synergy ability with another character, they can then use these abilities in combat. Think of it kind of like a tag team limit break attack that has some additional benefit. These benefits might be that you level up a character's limit break, you give them an extra chunk of ATB to charge, or you can even grant someone unlimited MP for a short amount of time. Wanting to use these synergy abilities will have you swapping characters more frequently, leading to a really fun variety in combat. The most impressive change made to Final Fantasy VII Rebirth from the original is the scope of the world. You can walk straight out the gates at Costa del Sol and can make your way to North Corel or the Golden Salsa. For regions with only one or two important locations, all manner of interesting landmark structures or settlements have been created to keep you engaged. Each region has world intel to complete. These tasks consist of finding towers, hunting down special locations, defeating fiends, and even herding mischievous moogles. Gameplay is also frequently shaken up as new minigames are introduced to Cloud and his party. Some of the minigames include Queen's Blood, a fun card game complete with its own storyline, a Fall Guys-like minigame where you're playing as a frog, or a Rocket League-style game as Red 13. Many other video games might have had me reach a new region only to groan as another 25 markers appear on my map to complete, but something about the incredible range in these activities instead had me really looking forward to what could possibly be next. A benefit of there being so many different activities is that you only do each a few times, so even if a particular minigame wasn't very fun or wasn't for you, you knew that you weren't about to have to do that 30 more times. One aspect of Final Fantasy VII Rebirth that consistently hits the nail on the head was the audio design and soundtrack. Whether I was watching the story or fold, or was getting hyped up for a combat or a minigame, the soundtrack was always perfectly placed. Growing up and being familiar with so many of these songs, it was incredible to hear their new arrangements and even how compositions would be changed depending on the circumstances. There were several important battles where the already iconic Final Fantasy VII battle music was dialed up to 11 or even altered to become more sinister to reflect the theme. Character light motifs are also constantly getting used to keep the player drawn in. It was hard not to notice when the soft sounds of Eris theme were sprinkled into different cutscenes, further highlighting her importance in this story. But I'm back now, Eris. I'm back. Whether the tone of the song is completely altered by different instruments or slowed down to the point where it's almost impossible to discern, this soundtrack does an incredible job of drawing the player's attention to an important character or moment when necessary. It is ambitious to take a game that was released in 1997 and remake it at such a large scale that it needs three whole games, but Square Enix has absolutely delivered again with Final Fantasy VII Rebirth. The story of Final Fantasy VII Rebirth is even more powerful than the original release. It contains everything that made the original special, while enhancing it for new and returning fans. While the final dungeon did slow progress down, it's a small misstep in an otherwise incredible experience. The game itself is then even further uplifted by the incredible soundtrack and sound design across the entire game. Exploration is fun and rewarding, combat is approachable and fast-paced while leaving room for strategy, and the minigames are more often than not an absolute blast to play. Even if that minigame isn't your thing, there's no worries because you can choose to never engage in it again. If you enjoyed Final Fantasy VII Remake, then it's a no-brainer to continue the story, and if you weren't a fan of Remake specifically for its linear nature, then the expansive open world and variety of tasks to take on might just make Rebirth a better game for you. For its incredible story, fast-paced and engaging combat, and incredible soundtrack, we at TechRaptor are rating Final Fantasy VII Rebirth a 9.5 out of 10.